the real question is, would there be a rich man reward from here to there? Well, they were offering the resources. Uh, if there had been a need for, say, an evacuation of an entire area and the kind of police powers that the province would be able to bring to bear, could they declare an emergency on our request? You had to evacuate forces in the area for some reason, or if you had to limit travel or do things that are extraordinary in that regard, one might have asked the province, but in this case, we're not asking the province for those kinds of powers right now. We're concentrating on getting the uh, emergency logistics team in place, and they were provided that it uh, without the declaration of an emergency. So what would you advise? Well, we advise that uh, we could be ready for that eventuality, but we were monitoring and, and contemplating about the deputy mayor, and the mayor, we decided that we'll continue to work. Is it fair to say that you and Jay are supportive of the mayor's decision to hold off? And we were very supportive of the mayor's decision to hold off, monitor the situation, see whether or not such a declaration may be necessary in the future, should things go really badly. Yeah. <coughs> Well, they start arriving tomorrow. As you can imagine, there are many logistics to take care of, uh, particularly those that are traveling from far distance that we need to organize beds and food and other practical matters and operating uh, protocols. And so the late day tomorrow, we'll start to see some arriving uh, through Christmas Day. I suppose in the worst case scenario, if you've got some traveling uh, 12, 13 hours by vehicle, uh, we may see some as late as Boxing Day. But all of these resources are welcome. Can we get an update on the Sunnybrook uh, Health Sciences Center and the power situation there? Yeah, that certainly has been, that continues to be our biggest problem. Our, our folks are still working What's the on situation? It. Right now they're rebuilding uh, the feeder systems from largely from scratch uh, that, that came up through the back of the, uh, the, the hospital uh, through the reading area. And so they're rebuilding those in some pretty difficult circumstances. It's sort of minute by minute. I think when I came over here, uh, they were hoping by the time I stood at this podium, I would be able to tell you that, uh, mm -hmm. that it had been energized So they continue to operate on emergency generation, um, and, uh, and, and we'll sit by every uh, hope that we'll uh, when we see you tomorrow morning we'll have some good news for you. What is the emergency for the power? Yeah, the entire uh, network getting to the hospital has been uh, knocked down. But uh, speaking about the city more generally, is that the issue? The branches have knocked down. The yeah, the, the vast majority of it is ice has built up on trees, and trees have fallen down on wires. I mean, that's really the, the sum of it. Uh, there are some icing issues associated with equipment, arcing, and other things, but those are fairly small in nature compared to uh, the magnitude of the damage that has been done by trees uh, building up ice weight and falling onto the wires. Mr. Bonker. Uh, we have a surge in three zero bus shuttle running uh, by the shepherd line that runs. We've also got additional staff in place, uh, particularly at the shepherd station to make sure that customers know what to do, where to go for the buses. Um, so we are talking to Toronto Hydro about that. We very much appreciate the help that they've given us. Uh, if it comes to a, 
um, a decision point, though, as to whether you know we should uh, push to get the shepherd line reinstated or whether we should be uh, as a team looking to restore power to uh, vulnerable people in high-rise buildings that literally don't have any power, then that's the kind of consideration that we're taking at the moment. The bus stoppers are working, uh, so although I want the shepherd back, uh, I'm not pushing so hard to that as to the detriment of people in place in it. So, you're, so it's, it's not as big a priority as the people in apartments who are cold overnight. No, I think it's uh, clearly for me. Like you have that luxury of It is a priority. Yeah. I want it's now the number one priority <coughs> for the CCC. My point is we have to work together as a team. We are doing that. Uh, and if with finite resources from Toronto Hydro, the greater need is for people who are at home and have no power, then I think that most people would think that it's a reasonable call to say we can still move you along the Sheffield Corridor, but we'll do so on buses. Okay, I guess I just want to understand maybe from Hydro's perspective, is that um, is that how you guys triage the situation? I think it's imperative that we get the CCC up as quickly as possible, as well as uh, getting the most vulnerable uh, Torontonians power as quickly as we can. So if, I think what he's describing to you is a theoretical, if we had to make a choice between the two, which would we choose? I agree with this assumption that Toronto Hydro would be better serving uh, its customers that are perhaps more vulnerable and people taking buses. Okay, but you haven't had a meeting that said we're going to do apartments yeah, before. Yeah, we have not done okay. that determination. Sunnybrook's almost up and running. This was a tremendous storm. I think you've driven around the city. I think you've seen it for yourself. Um, Anthony Haynes is doing a, the best job that anyone could ever ask him to do. Everybody behind me is working nonstop. We're not sick. We might have had five or six hours sleep at the most. We're up here. We're here at six in the morning. We're ready to go. We've got two press conferences. Tomorrow morning we'll be back here at eight o'clock. Um, we're in contract all day with each other. Uh, you can't expect anything else. I, I feel sorry for the people that don't have hydro. But, it, it, you know, what can I do? I can't pro make a promise that it's going to be on tomorrow when realistically it won't be. We still have, you know, about 190,000 residents without power. No, I got on at 10.30 last night. Nobody, I haven't talked to anyone since last night. Is that difficult in order to get the mayor who's had a conversation with the premier? Is that difficult for you when he's having a conversation with the congressman? Have you been coordinating with the deputy mayor? We're, we're fine. Um, we talked to the deputy mayor yesterday, and I haven't talked to him today. I haven't seen him today, but you know what? We're, we have a great team behind us. Again, we're, we're getting things done. You can see the numbers for yourself. The police have now opened up their divisions. Everyone's working together, and this is I'm very, very proud of the people that are standing behind me. Um, the councillors, uh, the budget chief, uh, Gentleman Wong, the speaker, Councillor Frenzat, uh, Francis Nanziata, um, Cesar Placio, who are with me today. Everyone is working as hard as possible to restore this power. We're trying to help people in every way. So well, we can handle it. position to offer up resources. So does that make it a bit more difficult? You can't coordinate? No, we're, we're fine. We're, we're, we're doing it. Like I said, I, I think um, everyone's been quite clear on where we stand. We are doing this. And um, I think we're doing a fan. I, I don't think. I know we're doing a fantastic job with the conditions that uh, we have to face. Is, so there, is, there, is, is there someone who can tell viewers, listeners, people who are at home whose power is just coming back on or they're waiting, what the situation might be with the food in the fridge or the freezer? Do you guys have anybody advising well, on that? Well, because well, a lot of people don't public know. Public health has said that food, if you, if, you don't close, if you don't open your fridge, it lasts 24 to 48 hours. That's been across the news. Now, you know, or, or 
you know, you want to maybe keep your food outside as long as it's, it's safe. Um, if it's cold enough in the garage, the raccoons can't get at it. That's what uh, people have been saying. It's a challenge. It, it's, you know, my heart breaks for these people. It, you know, some people are going to lose a lot of food. Um, but it's, it's Mother Nature. We have no control over this. All we can do is try to get people's hydro back on as quick as possible. And we are doing a tremendous amount of work in a very small period of time. You look in two days. Um, I'd put this city up against any other city right now in, uh, in this situation. We're doing a phenomenal job, and I'm proud of each and every one who's standing behind me. Everyone's working their backs off. Thanks very much. It's, it's very challenging. We're basically all on adrenaline right now. We've had very little sleep, all of us. And um, like John Levy said, coming up in the elevator, it's just we're on adrenaline. We're going to go home. We're going to talk till midnight, get up at 5 in the morning. We'll be back down here by 8 in the morning. It, 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 this is going to be tough, but we're going to get through it. And we're all committed to getting this power back on. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.